Hello. So here we are. Um, so today we are going to be talking about two things. We're going to be talking about shutter speed and also we're going to be looking at waterfalls. And we're going to look at different shutter speeds and we're going to look at um, different sources you can use with those shutter speeds to change the shot. So let's make a start. So shutter speeds are expressed in whole seconds, such as 130 seconds, or fractions of a second, such as 1 20th or 1 800th of a second. And obviously, the higher the number, the faster the shutter speed. So the slower the, the, the shutter speed, the more blurring and the more movement effect you get. And the faster the shutter speed, the more it is freeze frame and records everything that you see in front of you. Okay, so for my first image, I'm looking at a slow shutter speed, which is going to show the movement of the water, but not completely smooth it out. So I'm going for a quarter of a second, F10 and ISO 80. Now at this level, I can use a very low ISO to get a good amount of detail in, in the entire image. So two second shutter release. And then once I take the shot, you'll see that the shot is slightly overexposed. But what I'm going for in this shot is to make sure that I've got a good amount of movement in the water whilst keeping some of the edges of the water slightly clearer than I would with a 10 stop filter. For this next shot, I'm using a 640th of a second, f7.1 and 3200 ISO. Now I'm doing this in order to have a compromise between the ISO and the aperture. And as you can see, you get these fine water droplets in the shot there. And the final image gives a completely different impression to the shot and allows you to see those water droplets one by one coming off that waterfall. In this shot, I'm going to use a 10 stop big stopper on top of my polarizing filter. So I'm going to set my camera to bulb. I'm going to be using F9 and I'm going to be using ISO 320. I'm using ISO 320 in order to take down the amount of time that I have to um, make my exposure. Now I'm going to use 130 seconds for this exposure. So it's going to create a really, really nice smoothing effect in the water whilst keeping everything else around it nice and pristine. So you can see in this shot now, when I zoom in, the water is milky smooth, but then you have that detail in the background in the final image there. So this is the um another one of the beautiful four waterfalls on the on the waterfall walk. And um we're still looking at um shutter speed um and I'm gonna take you through uh some of the settings that I've been using. For this shot again I'm gonna use movement but I'm also going to have some of that um some some of the freeze frame elements of the water there as well. So I'm going to use a twentieth of a second, F11, ISO 64. So when I take the shot, I'm going to really have a combination of smoothed out movement and then some elements of water. So zoom into the focus, just check the focus, and then I'm going to take the shot. As you can see, there's a bit of a compromise between the two. Water's slightly overexposed, but you can still see some elements of the water splashing out. It's not as smoothed out as previously. So for this image, I'm going to use a polarizing filter and a big stopper. Now it's important to point out at this stage that um, I have another video on long exposure that goes into this in a lot more detail. So this is just an indication of what I'm using for this particular shot. So if you're interested in learning more about long exposure, then please have a look at the video in the link above. So as we look at this image, you can see clearly defined use of light and darks and that smoothed out water that works particularly well in this shot. Okay, so here we are at the last shot of the day. So um, just spotted on our walk this beautiful um, stretch of river with this amazing reflection in it. So the first thing is 
Um, but it's always good to do with water, just put a polarizing filter on. Now that I've got the um, polarizer sorted, I need to change my settings completely. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it down to ISO 64 because I want as much details as um, possible. I'm going to keep it on F11. And um, now with manual, manual exposure on the back of the camera, I'm just going to take that shutter speed down to where I want it to be. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I really want to smooth that water down more to really make it just kind of go completely white and just smooth out all this area so that we've got the texture of the trees and then the smooth water in the foreground. So um, that's what I'm going to do now and I'm going to do that using my big stopper. Okay, that's a bit awkward setting here. Um, right, so um, I've got my big stopper set up and um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a two minute long exposure. Now what that's going to do is it's going to really blur out this whole area and there won't be any ripples, it'll just be completely smooth all the way through. So let's make a start. In a nutshell then, just to conclude, so shutter speeds and creative use of shutter speed is all about what you want to try and achieve. So um, in terms of uh, water and in terms of anything fast moving, faster shutter speeds to capture that movement, to capture those droplets. I find that details um, uh, are, are better when you're doing that. So really zooming in and getting beautiful kind of details. Um, mid-range, now the, the, the mid-range of shutter speeds are fantastic for showing motion without it looking completely blurred and almost unnatural. So it shows some blur, especially with waves. So you can really kind of, um, uh, you, you, can, you can get the sense of the wave being there and, and, the, and the solidity of the water. Um, and then there is the extreme blurring using 10 stop filters and six stop filters and three stop filters, where you just completely blur out and smooth that water. So it almost forms like a trail or a path instead. So, Shutter speed is so versatile and something that you can take great joy in and you can take a great deal of time um, working out your, your composition, trying out different um, shutter speed lengths. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video and um, if you get a chance to, please can you like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.